Hi guys, in this video we'll take a look at manipulating exponentials, logarithm rules, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So how can we use the manipulation of exponentials in order to manipulate logarithms? We know a rule for manipulating exponentials, which we call the index rule. In particular, if we have a to the power of m, and we multiply by a to the power of n, this gives us a to the power of m plus n. And this is called an index rule. The logarithm is the inverse of the exponential, so we would expect logarithms to have some corresponding rules. If we have our f of x is in general a to the power of x for some value of a, then f inverse is going to be the logarithm base a of x. This is by the inverse definition. And so, for example, we'd like to have a rule for simplifying the log base a of x plus the log base a of y. We would like to determine these rules, as they can be useful in solving equations involving logarithms. So what exactly are the logarithm rules? The rules for manipulating logarithms come directly from the index rules. Namely, if we consider the log base a of x plus the log base a of y, then we can write this as the log base a of a to the power of the log base a of x plus the log base a of y. All we have done is to use the fact that the log base a and a to the power of are inverse functions. So applying one after the other will cancel out their effect. So all we get is the log base a of x plus the log base a of y, which is what we had before. But the useful thing from this, but the useful thing from this is that we can actually separate these using index rules. If we look at the inside of our first logarithm, we have a to the power of log base a of x plus log base a of y. And so we can separate these to give the log base a, and then we have a to the power of log base a of x multiplied by a to the power of log base a of y. This is again directly from our index rules for manipulating exponentials. And then again, we can use the inverse definition. a to the power of log base a of x is just x, because a to the power of and log base a are inverse functions. And similarly, for a to the power of log base a of y, we just get y. So this is going to become the log base a, and inside we're going to have an x times by a y. So we have x, y. So our first rule is the multiplication rule, as we just derived above. Namely, the log base a of x plus the log base a of y is equal to the log base a of x times y. So let's say we have the log base 2 of 3 plus the log base 2 of 6. This would be equal as one logarithm as the log base 2 of 3 times 6, which is 18. Similarly, the natural logarithm of 7 plus the natural logarithm of, say, 1 fifth would be equal to the natural logarithm of 7 over 5. Because again, the natural logarithm is just the log base e, so it's still a logarithm. The second rule is similar called the division rule. Namely, the log base a of x minus the log base a of y is equal to the log base a of x over y. This is a division rule. So for example, if we have the log base 2 of 6 minus the log base 2 of 3, this would be equal to the log base 2 of 2, because it's 6 over 3. Similarly, if we had the natural logarithm of 7 minus the natural logarithm of 1 fifth, this would be the natural logarithm of 7 over 1 fifth, which is 7 times 5, so we get the natural logarithm of 35. The third rule is called the power rule. If we have a number k multiplied by the log base a of x, we can bring the k inside, and we get the log base a of x to the power of k. This is our power rule. And so, for example, if we have four lots 
of log base 2 of 3. This is the same as the log base 2 of 3 to the power of 4. And therefore, this is the same as the log base 2 of 81. Similarly, if we have minus a half times the natural logarithm of 25, this is going to be the natural logarithm of 25 to the power of minus a half. And this gives us the natural logarithm of one fifth by evaluating the 25 to the minus a half. We can also summarize some basic facts involving logarithms. Namely, if we have the minus log base a of x, using the power rule, this is the same as the log base a of 1 over x. Because this minus outside is just the same as multiplying by minus 1. So you have an x to the power of minus 1 using the power rule. Similarly, as we've seen, the log base a of 1 is always 0. And similarly, the log base a of a is equal to 1. So in particular, the minus log base 2 of x is the same as the log base 2 of 1 over x. The log base 3 of the number 1 is equal to 0. And lastly, the natural logarithm of e, i.e. the same as the base, is equal to 1. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to write ln of 2 minus 3 ln of 1 quarter as a single logarithm. Our first step is to recall appropriate logarithmic rules. We're going to need the log base a of x plus the log base a of y is equal to the log base a of x times y. And we'll also need that k multiplied by the log base a of x is equal to the log base a of x and the power of k. Our second step is to use the second rule on the second term. Our second rule is that k times the log base a of x is equal to the log base a of x and the power of k. And so our minus 3 times the natural logarithm of 1 quarter is going to be the same as natural logarithm of 1 quarter to the power of minus 3. And this gives us natural logarithm of 64. Our third step is to use the first rule on the whole expression with the expanded second term. Our first rule is that the log base a of x plus the log base a of y is equal to the log base a of x times y. Our original expression was the natural logarithm of 2 minus 3 lots of natural logarithm of 1 quarter. We've shown this to be the same as the natural logarithm of 2 plus the natural logarithm of 64 because of our above work with the second term. And therefore, we can use this rule and this will become the natural logarithm of 2 times 64. And this gives us the natural logarithm of 128. Our last step is to write down the answer. The natural logarithm of 2 minus 3 lots of natural logarithm of 1 quarter is equal to ln of 128. Our second example asks us to solve the equation log base 4 of 8 minus log base 4 of x minus 1 is equal to 2. Our first step is to recall the subtraction rule for logarithms. Namely, the log base a of x minus the log base a of y is equal to the log base a of x over y. Our second step is to use the subtraction rule to make the LHS, the left hand side, a single logarithm. So again, our subtraction rule is that the log base a of x minus the log base a of y is equal to the log base a of x over y. So our left hand side expression, which is log base 4 of 8 minus log base 4 of x minus 1, will now become the log base 4 of 8 over x minus 1. Our third step is to use the exponentiation to remove the logarithm. Our new equation is the log base 4 of 8 over x minus 1 is equal to 2. Because all we've done is to manipulate the left hand side. And therefore, we can take 4 to the power of both sides to get 4 to the power of log base 4 of 8 over x minus 1. And then our right hand side will be 4 to the power of 2. 
The left hand side therefore is just going to be the 8 divided by the x minus 1 because the power and the logarithm cancel themselves out as inverse functions and it will be equal to 16. Our fourth step is to solve the resulting equation. Our equation is 8 divided by x minus 1 is equal to 16. By rearranging, we have x minus 1 is equal to 8 over 16. 8 over 16 is 1 half, therefore x is going to be equal to 3 over 2. Our last step is to write down the value of x that solves the equation. Namely, x is equal to 3 over 2 is the solution of our equation. Our last example asks us to solve the equation log base 3 of x equals log base 3 of 2 minus log base 3 of 2x minus 3. Our first step is to rearrange the equation to put all x terms on one side. So we're going to have the log base 3 of x and we can plus across the log base 3 of 2x minus 3. And this will be equal to the log base 3 of 2. Our second step is to recall the addition rule. Namely, the log base a in general of x plus the log base a of y is equal to the logarithm of the product xy. So we get log base a of xy. Our third step is to apply the addition rule to the left hand side. We have the log base 3 of x plus the log base 3 of 2x minus 3. Therefore, this is going to be equal to the log base 3 of x multiplied by 2x minus 3, all inside the logarithm. Our fourth step is to exponentiate to remove the logs. Our new equation has log base 3 of x multiplied by 2x minus 3 as the left hand side, and the right hand side is going to be the log base 3 of 2. So we can exponentiate both sides, i.e. take 3 to the power of both sides, and therefore they will be equal. This will remove both the powers and the logs, and so we're going to have x multiplied by 2x minus 3 is equal to 2. Our fifth step is to rearrange the resulting quadratic. Our quadratic is x multiplied by 2x minus 3 is equal to 2. We can expand and we'll get 2x squared minus 3x is equal to 2. Therefore, we have 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. Our sixth step is to factorise the quadratic. Our quadratic is 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0. And so we can factorise this as 2 brackets equal to 0. We're going to have a 2x in one and an x in the other. And we're going to have a 2x plus 1 and an x minus 2. Our seventh step is to solve for the possible values. We have the equation 2x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, the possible values are going to be x equals minus a half, or we can have x equals 2. Our eighth step is to check the solutions in context. Recall that our equation has the terms initially the log base 3 of x, as well as the log base 3 of 2x minus 3. Notice that if x is equal to minus a half, then this value itself is going to be negative. This therefore can't actually be a solution because logarithms are undefined for negative values. So in the equation, we would have a term that says log base 3 of minus a half, and this doesn't have any actual real value. But then if we consider x equal to 2, the other possible solution, we see that 2 itself, the value of x, is strictly positive, and 2 lots of the value 2 minus 3, i.e. 2x minus 3, is equal to 1, which is also strictly positive. And therefore, this is a solution, because both of the logarithms are defined. Our last step is to write down the values of x that solve the equation. And the only value of x that solves the equation is x is equal to 2. Writing down x equals minus a half as well is incorrect. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. 
Just click the Snap Reply Smiley Face, and together, let's make A-Level Maths a walk in the park.